Harry's unmistakable signature sluiced through the bond in a way it rarely did. Ferocious hunger, pushed aside by a fiercely protective and indomitably territorial rush. He sensed something in his day sitter and in his home that he most certainly did not like, and I felt him stalking through the cabin toward us. Chapel must have heard me gasp because he frowned seconds before the temperature in the kitchen plunged. You won't be pleasant about what, my own? Harry asked from the shadowy pantry, his London accent deceptively calm yet crisp with displeasure. Pausing to lurk in the darkness there, long enough to assess our guest's motives, Harry tested the mood before prowling into the kitchen's overhead lighting, impeccably dressed as usual. His gray flannel trousers were pressed and neat, though he'd rested in them, the dead don't toss and turn, and his white, bespoke French cuff shirt showed his best cufflinks, garnets like spots of blood at his wrist. His tone was brisk. Agent Chapel, imagine my astonishment in finding that my pet is unsettled in your company. How terribly unusual it is that someone of your experience would think it prudent to displease my advocate. One might go so far as to describe her as vexed. He loitered behind me, laying a pale hand on my head and stroking my hair. Are you vexed, my precious one? I rolled my eyes and sighed as loudly as possible. Perhaps you would care to explain, Harry continued tightly, what trouble you have brought to my doorstep this evening, Agent Chapel, and what folly led you to think that was wise. Hey, sharp tie, Harry. I said, tilting my head back to show him an adoring smile. Don't you look handsome? Harry clucked his tongue at me, though his gaze warmed with a streak of desire. Now, ducky, do you really think me so easily distracted by flattery? It was pointless to try to lie to a revenant who had centuries of experience reading the living, never mind to my bonded partner. Yep. The view up your nostrils from here is slightly less handsome. Harry gently but inexorably tipped my head back upright, but his fingertips on my pulse points lingered tantalizingly. Good evening, Lord Dreppenstedt, Chapel said, gathering his spare papers into his briefcase. My apologies for the unannounced visit. But you are always welcome, of course, my dear man. Harry said, with a slight incline of his head. Except when you are traumatizing my beloved companion. Yeah, Gary, stop traumatizing me, I groaned, as if adrift in a tumultuous maelstrom of unhinged emotion. I should explain, Chapel said, and I will, but I have to get some important paperwork done and I'm on a tight timeline. You'll have to excuse me 